Hello. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Omar and, and, and Ignorance for having invited me to, to speak about the challenges of information in, in global health. Um, and, and before I start, I'm, I'm going to take, unfortunately, I'm an academic and not an activist, so I'm going to take more of an academic approach to, to this than the, the previous speaker and really try to define uh, first some of the terms that, that we use often but um, are, are, are still not defined clearly. And, and the first one is global health. A lot of people talk about global health issues, global health problems, but if you look from an academic perspective, there is no clear definition of, of what global health is and, and isn't. And so just dividing up the two, the two words that make up global health, firstly global, um, a term that we use quite frequently in the, in the relationship to globalization, so the, the concept of in the whole world, this issue of interdependence between countries, between continents, um, beyond defined borders of, of individual countries, so global problems know no boundaries um, based on, on territory and, and what, we, what we look at as, as individual country um, problems. And then next is, is just the word health, um, and, and health is defined by the, the World Health Organization as really a state of complete physical, men mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And I think that's important, is that we often think of health as not having disease. Um, diseases such as HIV AIDS, diabetes, tuberculosis, the flu, but this concept of, of well-being is often forgotten. I'm not going to bore you um, with the debates about how to define global health, and I'm just going to pick one of the many definitions that exist, and this is the definition from the Institute of Medicine um, in the United States. And so it's health problems, issues, and concerns that transcend national boundaries, may be influenced by circumstances or experiences in other countries, and are best addressed by cooperative actions and solutions. And I think looking at each element of this definition, it's interesting to see the role information plays. Um, issues and concerns that transcend national boundaries. If you think about information and, and how information played such a crucial role um, in, in swine flu, H1N1 virus, and, and the res global response to that, people buying masks, people uh, washing their hands every two minutes, countries stockpiling uh, medicines and vaccines, vaccination campaigns. Or also, if you look at the, at the change in HIV AIDS and the information, um, as the previous speaker mentioned, is how, how now a, a, a health issue that transcends national boundaries, the, the information about HIV AIDS has also transcended these national boundaries. Um, this, this concept of, of also transcending national boundaries is not only a, from a positive perspective, but if you think about, and I'm sure many of you have traveled to different countries, you've all come across advertising for smoking, for Coca-Cola, for McDonald's, um, for tobacco products, for a whole range of unhealthy products um, that are widely spread through information, through media. Um, and and this, this really links to, to the second part of the, the definition, which is being influenced by circumstances or experiences in other countries. We often think of this globalization or westernization of diets, um, and, and this is really something that's, that's global and, and part of this globalization um, and what some people have actually termed coca colonization. And this, this changing of lifestyles throughout the world is on one hand a positive aspect for some in economic development, but also a negative aspect in that these Western lifestyles are now being brought to, to many countries throughout the world and changing the ways people live. Um, and it's impacting agriculture, impacting urban issues around urbanization, food security, and things like that. And in preparing this talk, it, it, it brought me back because actually I met Omar at a, an ISEC meeting, and some of you may be familiar with that organization. And f with ISEC, which is a, a student organization, I spent a, a, a summer a few years ago, I won't say how long because then you'll guess how old I am, um, in a rural village in Indonesia where the, the family where I lived had no running water, but they had satellite TV. 
And I remember sitting with my, my Indonesian colleagues watching MTV. And preparing for this talk, it brought me back to that, that concept of a global world and how in a remote area in Indonesia, we were watching MTV and how MTV and culture and information through, through TV at that time and now through the internet just influences people's behaviors, the styles, their ideas. Um, and again, this, this dissemination of information has, has negative aspects, but also has positive aspects. Specifically for health, internet, new technologies, um, in the field of health and medicine, the, these innovations can be spread much more rapidly than they ever have before. Um, and again, this, this speed on access to information helps with collaborations. Um, I've, I have ongoing projects in Peru and Mozambique that without the internet, without Skype, without web-based collaborative tools would be impossible. Um, and it, it just makes the, the, the sharing of experiences um, possible and, and research projects easier to do. So really, the, the first part of my talk was to just briefly link this issue between global health and information, and how information both influences and impacts global health in positive and, and negative ways. But coming back to, to one, one of the key themes in, in and ignorance, this informed and, and the source of information, is really what, what are we talking about when we think of, of information? Um, so d definition, d the definition of information is data ac that is accurate and timely, um, that is specific and organized for a specific reason, presented within a given context, that gives some meaning or relevance to this information, and that leads to some form of increase in, in awareness, in knowledge, and a decrease in uncertainty. And so all that, the, the aim of information is, is to hopefully be able to make use of this information for a decision. Now, if I presented this graph, um, what, what would you do if this was a stock price? What, what, what would your response be versus if this graph showed a decrease in deaths due to a given condition? So it's all about context and how we use the information that we're given or presented to determine what we're going to do. So I, as, as Omar said in his introduction, I'm a, a researcher and lecturer here at the University of Geneva, and I view myself both as a user and creator of, of global health information. Um, I use publications, reports, and lectures that I go to given by colleagues to help inform my research, the lectures I give to, to my students. Um, and, and my research creates, hopefully, new ideas in the students if they're listening to me may influence my colleagues in the type of research they do. And so how, how this very simple diagram of the research lectures I attend and the research I do either in the field or, or just by reading, how it leads to new research and new lectures I give, how this influences colleagues and students, which creates new ideas and, and the, the, the information flow continues. The challenge in, in this extremely simple model is that I, you assume that there's no barriers to information access. And in looking at, at issues of access to health, you often look at three factors um, that can act as a barrier to access. And those are uh, affordable accessibility. Can I actually access the treatment I need? And the previous speaker mentioned that in, in terms of access to HIV treatments, ARVs. In Switzerland, in the UK, those are no longer a problem. But in many resource poor countries, they are a problem. Um, the issue of, of affordability. Can an individual needing a certain treatment actually afford it, either because they have the, the amount of money they need, the purchasing power to do that, or this medicine, this treatment is provided for free by a government, a non-governmental organization, or um, an international org uh, organization. But finally, one issue, and I think it's important for information, is suitability. Is, is what is accessible and affordable actually suitable for what I have? Is it tailored to meet my needs? So for example, for, for HIV AIDS, are there pediatric formulations for some of these medicines? Um, so how, how does this all fit together and how does this apply for information? So first of all, about accessibility. So accessing information um, 
means being able to know where and how to find information you need. So it's being literate, um, not only in terms of being able to read and write, but also nowadays computer literate. Um, you just think about this. I have an iPad in my hands. Just imagine all the information I can access because I was, I'm able to access and afford an iPad. Um, I'm a lecturer here, so therefore I have access to the Wi-Fi network, I have access to the library, I have access to databases. But this isn't the case for every uh, country or every individual. Can, can people ac afford and access the computers, the networks that they need to be able to, to access all the information that's out there? Um, and there's, there's also the issue of affordability. Um, Nowadays, what's interesting in interacting with students, especially young students in, in their early 20s and who haven't known a world or a, a research world without the internet, is that information is widely available, widely accessible. Um, but we forget that you still have to pay for information in, in many cases. And this is, this is an example to, to access uh, The Lancet, which is a medical journal. Some people have to pay to access that I don't have to pay because I'm lucky that the University of Geneva pays for, for this. Um, and then there's finally the suitability. Is the information I'm getting actually suitable to my context, my patient, the health challenge I'm facing? And I find this, this issue of particularly of, of interest in interacting with students who nowadays reference Wikipedia, reference blogs, the same way that I reference peer review journals um, and, and things like that. And in looking at this, what, what are suitable sources of information? Is a blog suitable? Wikipedia, a medical journal. Um, and this is issue of, of, of suitability is also linked to the issue of affordability. There's a vast array of free information out there, but is it suitable to what I need to do? I know that if I'm reading The Lancet or the Tribune de Genève, the New York Times, I know that there's a filter there that's looked at this information. There's an editor. There's a peer review process. But how do you judge the quality of Twitter or a blog? Is it the number of tweets? Is it the, the number of followers? Is it who's writing? So if I'm writing the blog, does that mean it's any different than a leading expert in the world of, of global health? Um, and, and this, this, this information is easy to get nowadays, but how do we filter it? And um, I think coming back to that is, is there are many initiatives, and End Ignorance is, is one clear initiative that will play this important role as an entry point into the vast quantities of information available and help those who want to get involved and want to get specific information on, on an issue um, be able to access it um, and, and, and afford it, as, as was seen in the small video, and ignorance is free, and, and therefore affordability will not be an issue. But there are other initiatives, such as open access publishing, so Biomed Central and the Public Library of Science offer uh, free access to scientific, peer-reviewed information. Um, I've started the, the 100 campaign with some colleagues, which is looking at the issue of access to insulin and hopes to act as a means to increase information about the issue of access to insulin and take scientific evidence that exists and make it more suitable to the general public um, using social media and trying to use that to develop a, a community-based um, campaign. The last example I've put is actually health information for all. And any of you interested in the issues of health, global health, um, I highly recommend joining their, their mailing list um, as, as uh, Health Information for All aims to address the challenge that every day tens of thousands of children, women, men die needlessly for want of simple low-cost in interventions. And most of these interventions are, are lacking not because of lack of money, not because of lack of resources, but because of lack of information. And I've taken this quote um, from the website a major contributing factor is that the mother, family, caregiver, or health worker does not have access to the information and knowledge they need when they need it to make appropriate decisions and save lives. And I'd really like to focus on this last sentence, and I've actually changed my, my talk slightly um, from when I started, because last week, this happened to me. I became a father. <laughs> um, 
And 